Use the plastic tool provided with the sand filter to carefully unscrew the top. If you no longer have this tool, you'll have to hunt one down at your local pool store. Inspect the o-ring on the underside of the lid for cracks, damage, and signs of drying out. Next, remove the screen from the air by bypass line and set it aside so it doesn't get lost. Narrate it later. Okay, if you got one of these big bolt around filters, um, the, the, the difficult part is actually unbolting the uh, two pieces of the clamshell. Oh, yeah. Um, you got to go around and unbolt all these guys. Oh, my gosh. And um, you got to be real careful because this one, this particular filter is in good shape and all the bolts are new, but on a lot of those filters, the bolts are rusted out and corroded, so you might break a few and have to replace a few. Once you get the lid off, you can come in there and almost empty the sand out with a shovel and it's real quick but you gotta be careful because it's hard to get replacement parts of this filter and you could damage the laterals because they're not far I underneath see. the sand so um, keep that in mind when um, if you're changing the sand in one of these filters uh, on a sand filter with a uh, top mounted dial valve like this Hay Hayward unit here in order to remove it you have gotta unscrew these unions here and then You'll unscrew this collar, remove whatever type of collar there is on your specific filter. If, uh, if you don't have unions on your plumbing tour, it can be quickly disconnected. You'll have to cut with a hacksaw and then install unions, which you can find at any uh, Ace, Home Depot, Checker Pools, or any other um, handy, handyman store or supply house you have. Um, once you remove the top on this, you'll see that there's the pipe that comes straight up. You can't bend that out of the way, so what you'll have to do is put a rag in that or over that to prevent sand from falling down in there as you remove the sand from the filter. This is hand scooping. It's a messy way to do it. It's just messy either way no matter how you do it. Once you've scooped out as much sand as possible, the filter should be light enough for one or two people to move it for cleaning. Don't forget to disconnect the filter from the pool plumbing. It'll be much harder to move if you do. If this isn't possible, open the drain on the filter tank and hose out the tank as best you can. All right, Paul, so what are we trying to do here when we're spraying out the inside? We're just, we're just cleaning it out, get a fresh start all the way. Most people do sand changes and, uh, and you know, take the sand out and change it, and that's fine. But I, we take it, I take it apart and clean the internals out, take uh, the laterals, clean all the, the sand that's stuck in the laterals out of there and start fresh all the way as if we were just, as if it was a new filter. One thing we got to watch for when we're muscling this filter around and disassembling it and torquing on things is the bulkheads right here. All the pipes are connected to these bulkheads and um, if we put too much torque we can actually crack the tank or we can loosen a seal so we need to be real careful um, when we're working around these things. You just take a gentle hand and keep a close eye on it. Sometimes it's best to just leave the uh, backwash valve attached while you're doing that and that kind of gives it a little more support or something for you to grab onto. So at this point now, we're removing the internals out of the filter itself. Paul, what's the first thing you do? You unscrew the uh, diffuser at the top? You don't have to. You can tip it to the side and, and reach the laterals. Uh, the problem is, is that the grit and stuff get, where the laterals threads into the hub, the laterals thread in, the grit gets into the threads. You try to unscrew it, it doesn't want to come out. So it's good to run water over it twist it back and forth a little bit while you're working it and it'll eventually come loose. Here is a clean lateral on the right side versus a dirty lateral on the left side. 
And you can see on this dirty lateral, lots of uh, lots of sand pieces in there. Sorry about the jitteriness. And those all have to be picked out with an ice pick. And then a clean lateral over here. Nice and clear and clean all the way around. I like the old fashioned skinny long ice pick with a wood handle on it because you can tap when you do uh -huh. tap. You know, it, it, it's got a, just enough weight that creates the right vibration for this for things to happen and, yeah. you know, and not break something. That's what's nice about them. Mm -hmm. Okay, that looks good. That one's good. This particular ladders are pretty clean, mm. which is good. Yeah, because a lot of times they're worse. A lot worse. It's the parts on the uh, internals of the sand filter. The way it works is when the water comes into the filter, it goes in through the top, through this pipe here, into here. This piece is screwed into here, and this diffuses the water and sort of sends it out like a like a shower head or a fountain head. Then, as the sand pa or the water passes through the sand, it comes back out, goes into these laterals here, and these laterals are all screwed in to this bottom piece here. And you can see it's got threaded holes all the way around. And these laterals go in all the way around like a big star. And the water gets pulled back in, pushed through and collected here, comes out through here, through a similar pipe. Only that one paces downward and that's what leads it back out. In here, you can see this pipe turned to the side is actually normally in normal operation is turned downward. So that the 90 faces down, and that's what the hub screws onto. And there's this piece that sticks out at the top, this little flexy piece of tube. And what that does is that bleeds the air off the top. So it's real important that that always, when you're done putting this filter back together, that's pointed upward and up into the top of the lid. And a special note if sand's going back to the pool, it's what is one of two reasons. It's either a broken lateral. Or a lot of times is this tubing comes off where you see it mounting to the bottom pipe inside or has fallen down inside and it sucks sand out, it siphons it out and puts it back in the pool. So uh, keep an eye on that. Mm -hmm. Now when we assemble this, we're going to first put the hub on. Then we will uh, screw the laterals on once the hub is screwed on. And we got to make sure that before we screw on all the laterals, we turn that hub so it's downward and that those laterals are pointing outward in a lateral type way, hence the name laterals. Once we've got that assembly on and, and all that stuff, another note is that we hand tighten that. We don't over crank it or do anything like that. Once we've got all our laterals screwed on and they're in place, then we come back and we can screw our top piece into the bulkhead and then screw our diffuser on and make sure that we have our air bleeder tube passing through the diffuser and up into the lid. Alrighty, next step once we get the filter back in place is to uh, replace the sand. So Paul, are there any special tricks you'd like to recommend to our uh, backyard uh, weekend do-it-yourselfers out there on putting in sand? Well, a lot of people like to use a dust mask. Just make sure you're not breathing the dust because it is a silica dust. I'm good for the lungs, so be, please be careful with that. I rec recommend that. And usually I just cut the corner and just pour it in when I'm doing it. And uh, that's about it. It's not too bad. you got to make sure you're not dumping the center pipe and keep that tilted away. And you'll, on this style of filter, where your backwash valve is located on the side and you're able to get to the top that way, you'll find the diverter at the top that you talked about earlier it usually sits here and it tips to the side. So that's what you do, you tip it to the side and then you dump your sand in. Next step is pushing the sand around so it's nice and even. When you ever have to wonder how much sand goes in here, and you're, just, you're questioning it, you should be a label on the side of the tank, but if not, just know on the valve, on a filter like this, it should be somewhere within this pipe range, is where your sand level should be in here. Mm -hmm. On this particular filter, it's 500 pounds. Another common sense item to address is to make sure that the filter is back in place and reattached to the pool plumbing before adding new sand to the filter. Unless you're the Incredible Hulk, then that doesn't apply to you. On a filter with a top mount valve, Add your first bag of sand, then make sure your standpipe is centered so that it will mate with the valve properly. You can see we got our diffuser back in place. 
don't forget about the internal air bleeder screen. Yep. Because when this acts as a, as a sucking tool to keep sucks the air out of the top of the filter, there's an air pocket that sucks it out, keeping the water up here. And if there's no screen on it, it's a bypass. So anything that goes in this filter, this will suck it out and shoot it back to the pool. So if you're sucking up dirt, it shoots the dirt back to the pool. Put a screen on it, it should eliminate some of the big stuff getting back in there. And that's what these are, is an internal air bleeder screen. So any of that debris you're picking up, it'll get caught on here. When it backwashes, this tube pressures, the water's reversed now. The water pressures up through here and cleans the screen off. Okay, so you see Paul, is uh, he's hand screwing this on first. He's not using the tightening tool yet. I don't need to. A lot of people, when they dump this in, they don't clean the, the threads out. I took a wire brush, a small toothbrush wire brush, like this, and I went, and I went around the inside and cleaned all that out of there, make sure it was clean.